All right, guys, welcome back to SPL Society. So I stopped by Home Depot, picked up some more 1024 nuts to put on the all thread. Now that uh, all the all thread is tight, it's pretty strong, but it still kind of moves a little bit. It's okay, but I want to make sure that those amps aren't vibrating like that. So I'll probably have to build some type of bracket out of angle iron or something like that to make sure that the amps are completely stable. But right now, I think I'm just going to get started on cutting the old amp rack. I'm going to get started on cutting that apart and figuring out what I want to do. So let's get to it. Got these little angled pieces cut. They're gonna go right here. And then we can use this piece of angle iron to kinda reinforce it. I gotta trim the bottom so that way it sits flatter against that one and a half by one and a half. The next thing I'm gonna work on is I'm gonna pull the alternator bracket off. I gotta swap out the stock alternator that runs the truck. It's gonna be a pretty long process, but gotta do it. So let's get to it. All right, so we swapped out the uh, factory alternator for a good alternator. Now that I have that swapped out, I need to install the excess power VCM. With the headway cells, I was charging at 14.8 volts, so most GM regulators have a 14.8 volt set point. So you just have to send it power, put the sense wire on the output set of the alternator, and it's good. But with the yin long, I wanna be charging anywhere between 15.5, 15.8, maybe 16 volt. The VCM is gonna be able to allow me to do that, so I'm just going through the instructions right now. Um, there's probably gonna be a few relays and stuff that I have to wire up. So um, I'm just gonna get started on it. Once I get it all hooked up and everything, I'll kind of explain how it works. Finally got the VCM wired in. I'll show you guys where I got all the wires hooked up, kind of how it works. This is the VCM harness, and you've got a yellow, a black, and an orange. This yellow is supposed to go to the alternator stud. It's constant power. This is what it reads the voltage from. I have that yellow over here to the fuse block. It's on the side before the fuse. That way it's always reading uh, what the alternators are putting out. The ground is here, right on the case of the alternator. So this case, this case is bolted to the bracket and connected to this case so that way uh, these two alternators should act as one. The orange wire goes to your sense wire and so that orange wire is just butt connected to the sense wires of both of the alternators here. The only thing is I have to wire this into switched ignition. That way when you turn the key on, it turns the VCM on. But I don't have the battery bank installed in the truck yet. You don't want to energize an alt when there's no load. You want to at least have a battery connected. I've got the uh, Yinlong bank already balanced and ready to go on the truck. So I think I'm going to throw it back there, connect the fuses. So I got the battery hooked up and I tested out the VCM and uh, not working great. Uh, 
Um, apparently I can only set it to 15.9 volts. And even though it's set at 15.9 volts, it just decides to keep charging higher and higher. Shot up to 16.4 and uh, shut the truck off. I don't know. Um, gonna have to look at it tomorrow and call Access Power, see what they say, and uh, go from there. So that's it for this episode. Um, like I said, tomorrow I'll try to figure out what's wrong with that. Also tomorrow, JR is gonna help me with the uh, amp rack, welding up some pieces. Hopefully tomorrow I can get the amp rack in. Once I get the amp rack in, I can finish wiring in the battery. Uh, the way it's supposed to be nice and pretty and uh, we'll go from there so I'll catch you guys in the next one